On the sea, it's all about balance. You need balance to stand on the boat and step with certainty. The net used to wrangle the day's catch is balanced between the floats and the weights. These fishermen have searched these waters for many years, and with each passing day, there are less fish than the day before. They cast their nets in vain and pull them in in despair. I am Christopher Lett, journalist, filmmaker, and National Geographic Explorer. Hello and welcome back again to another amazing episode. This is the Diaspora Transition episode where we interview people who moved back from the diaspora and currently living here on the continent. We speak to them what have been their challenges and you know so far, even people moving back and forth, you know, to really understand why they decided to leave somewhere like the United States of America for a place like Ghana in Africa. So on this episode, we have here someone very special. Okay, he's been working for CNN, Natural Geographic, and he's here in Ghana working on a project. And he's going to tell us about the project very soon. So without further ado, Mr. Chris, welcome on the show. Thank you, Hayford, hey yes. So, um, for those watching you, I said briefly about who you are, yes. but if you don't mind, can you briefly uh, introduce yourself to Sure, sure. You? My name is Chris Lett. I am a journalist and filmmaker here in Ghana working on a documentary about the impact of uh, overfishing on coastal communities. This is called Saviors of Our Seas. You can follow us on Instagram as we develop this film and docu-series, but what we're covering is a deeply uh, important environmental issue, environmental justice issue for the people of Africa and for the world, really. Um, the overfishing crisis here has impacted many fishing communities and decimated uh, a lot of ecological resources mm -hmm. of Ghana. What are some fish. of the um, impacts that had on um, some communities based on your research? Right, so uh, all of Ghana's coastal land right. is a part of the marine fishery mm -hmm. in Ghana. So the four coastal regions, as you know, mm -hmm. um, and these regions rely heavily on fishing mm -hmm. as a commercial enterprise, right. um, but also as a cultural mainstay. Okay. Wow. You know, uh, many people venerate the fish as okay. gods, as small gods, as some people yeah. call them. But uh, this resource has been decimated mm -hmm. over the last 35 years. Wow. Um, more so in the last 10 years due to the impact of foreign fishing fleets uh, mm. that uh, operate uh, a, lot, a lot of trawl vessels, wow. which do the most destructive form of fishing mm -hmm. in the territorial waters. That's very right. interesting. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Wow. So um, how long have you been uh, doing the project? If I, uh... Well, I've been working, uh, I've been researching this project for about seven years. Seven years. Before I even uh, left CNN, I was working uh, on the research for this project. I ended okay. up getting a fellowship at the University of Colorado in wow. Boulder, Colorado, okay. uh, where I was able to delve deep into the issue of overfishing. Mm -hmm. I came here even for some more research. Okay. Um, and it all started from when I was uh, first introduced to Ghana, okay. when I studied abroad here. Let's talk about it. Yeah. How did you first know about Ghana and how did it start? Well, I've known about Ghana for a long time. Really? Yeah. I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Very Afrocentric upbringing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So while the schools didn't always teach us a lot about Africa, uh, Africa I had my community that mm -hmm. taught us a lot about Africa mm -hmm. and um, Ghana as well and its wow. rich history. Wow. So uh, my ancestors are mm -hmm. a part of the Ghana Mali Empire. Oh, so wow. my ancestors come from Ghana, from Mali, excuse Mali. me, mm -hmm. uh, we're the Dogon tribe. So I oh, can say that that's I know yeah, that tribe. yeah, those yeah. are my roots. And wow. so what we have is um, the desire to come to Africa mm -hmm. just to see what's going on, right? Wow. Um, I was supposed to study abroad in a whole different part of the world. I was supposed to go to South America, Bolivia, mm -hmm. but due to civil unrest, I wasn't able to yeah. go there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next up was Ghana. Wow. I had a lot of friends who had done this program. They exchanged from my college, which is Guilford College mm -hmm. in Greensboro, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And we do our exchange program with the University of Cape Coast. Most students come here, end okay. up in Accra, okay. the University of Legon. Legon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel sorry for them because Cape Coast <laughs> was beautiful. very beautiful, is out of the shitty city <laughs> yeah. and in the heart of, um, really, in, yeah, in the heart of the central region, in the heart of Ghana, quite honestly, because back then, it's a long time ago, 2004, mm -hmm. it was still very, um, I won't say very rural, but it was much more 
rural mm -hmm. than it is today. Okay. And uh, I, I would enjoy going to the beach, watching the fishermen pull in their nets. Wow. It was a very uh, majestic okay. kind of wow. feel. Wow. So you first landed in Ghana when? 2004. 2004? January 2004. And, okay. And then you've been back and forth? I've been back and forth okay. since then. And then I, you recently moved back and you've been spending almost a year here. Yeah. We were here for about a year. I got a grant to actually to, to get started on this documentary. And okay. so I'm... I'm just getting started. Okay. This is just the wow. beginning, um, and Ghana is going to be the first of many episodes in okay. this series. Wow. I'm very interested to see the episode when it comes out. So what, what can people uh, find it if it's out? That's a great question. We'll figure that out later. <laughs> so um, let me ask you, okay, uh, Ghana, why didn't you choose any? I, I know you're linked to mm -hmm. Mali Empire, right? Mm -hmm. But Africa is a huge continent. Yes. You could have chose to go to Senegal, you could, sure. Gambia, or other sure. places. Yeah. What really made Ghana stand out to you? To, you know, make you very interesting. Well, for this particular project, I've already had uh, 18 years experience coming okay. back and forth to Ghana. Um, the language helps. It's Most people speak English, mm -hmm. so that helps kind of get okay. around a little okay. easier. Um, I speak some French, but not enough to okay. like move around as much as I could here in Ghana. Okay. And, um, and also the audience for this documentary mm -hmm. is uh, an English-speaking audience, okay. mainly because I work in an English-speaking right. market in the okay. U.S. So that helps also translate the story okay. of the fishermen. Wow, that's nice. You said something about leaving CNN. Yes. In your words, you left CNN. I did. Really? Tell yeah. me about it. Why? Well, I left CNN for several reasons, but okay. one of the main reasons was when you, as you may know, you've done a lot of mm -hmm. uh, media mm -hmm. at this point in your mm -hmm. career. You've been operating <laughs> this channel for about five years, I think, yeah. from my research yes. at least, and probably before then before as well. Then, yeah. So you can understand how daily uh, broadcasts and daily live production mm -hmm. can wear on you. Yes. Um, and in my case, I was actually uh, working at CNN as a field producer. Mm -hmm. I started as a tour guide. Oh, wow. So I would, if you ever come to Atlanta and you want to take a tour of the CNN Center, I would be the first person you oh, wow. meet. Wow. And I was taking people on tours, and mm -hmm. it was a great way to get your foot in the door. Mm -hmm. Work my way up to field producer and reporter and journalist for the network and after about three and a half, four years of the daily grind of breaking news, meaning that your life is not your own, <laughs> you wake up, they tell you you have to go here, you have to grab your bag and you have to go, you may yeah. be there for days, you may be there for weeks, it wow. could be a, a, a hurricane, a natural disaster, a mass wow. shooting, whatever the case was. Wow. Um, I was covering a story that was not supposed to be very dangerous at all, mm. but it ended up being attacked by ISIS terrorists. Wow. So it was the first ISIS-directed terror attack on U.S. soil wow. in 2015. Okay. So from there, I developed some uh, PTSD and mental mm -hmm. issues that people uh, don't normally recognize or aren't trained to recognize okay. in the media world okay. as much as they are today, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on top of that, it was during the height of the Black Lives Matter movement. Mm. Okay. And so I was um, just running and gunning, man. Wow. And I couldn't, couldn't wear that... Um, production yeah. side of myself out. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so I had to take a break. Wow. I took that necessary break. In the meantime, I got certified as a yoga instructor. Okay. So okay. that was part of my healing process. Wow. Wow. And dedicated my skills as a journalist and storyteller to the environment. Okay. So I figured uh, I can best serve myself as a storyteller and the public that wants to watch my stories okay. by telling stories about the environment and ways that we can help wow. raise awareness and wow. possibly have solutions. Wow. So that's how National Geographic came up. Yeah. Yeah. So I ended up applying for a fellowship called the Fulbright National okay. Geographic Society Storytelling Fellowship. Mm -hmm. And in this fellowship, you're able to combine your skills as a storyteller mm -hmm. and the funding of the U.S. Fulbright program to do research. Mm -hmm and to um, collect footage, okay. gather materials mm -hmm. necessary to tell these stories wow. across the world. Your portfolio is very amazing. Thank you. <laughs> so let's talk about Ghana a little bit, okay? You've been here, you've seen around, you've been in Cape Coast. What would you say is your most favorite thing about Ghana? Oh, wow. I would say the natural sights the sometimes. Natural. Yeah, okay. just sitting around, mm -hmm. looking at the ocean is very beautiful, mm -hmm. is one thing. Um, the people. Wow. Are number one. What is everybody's that? beautiful. Just everybody's so beautiful. <laughs> Just look at look at beautiful faces and yeah. people wow. all day wow. to hear people talk. Mm -hmm. uh, 
sometimes especially Fonti mm-hmm. um, and Ewe, mm-hmm. those languages sometimes, Ewe, excuse me, okay. right? Uh, <laughs> um, those, you hear them and you, I may not know everything you're saying. You I, some chi? I speak some chi, some okay. Fonti, some Ewe. That's the same. Boko. Okay. <laughs> that yo, was good. Yo, yo, what I was saying? We did the hair for Yo, yo, we're from Kofi. <laughs> yeah. That was good. Yeah. Wow. So, um, yeah, I, I learned Fonti way back in 2004. Wow. My teacher was actually Nana Jane Apoko Ajiman, Prof Nana Jane Apoko Ajiman, oh, wow. the last, wow. yeah, uh, vice presidential candidate for wow. the NDC back in the day. Wow. Yeah, so she's a pretty wow. tough lady. So she would not let me get by without. Wow. You are deeply rooted in Ghana. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, people, you, you are saying so many beautiful things about Ghana, right? Africans living on the continent, young teenagers don't see it the same way you see it. This is true. Right? So what are you seeing here in Ghana that the ordinary person or the ordinary Ghanaian who wants to escape to the US, UK mm-hmm. is not seeing? You know, I don't know what they're seeing. Right. Because I'm not them. Right. But I know what I see. Mm-hmm. And what I see is um, people full of creative mm-hmm. and bursting with creative energy. Mm-hmm. And that creative energy is something that's been driving the world for millennia. I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, Howard French, but I would encourage you to read his book, Born okay. in Blackness. Okay. Um, I had the opportunity to speak with him, mm-hmm. uh, or to rather hear him speak mm-hmm. here in Ghana. Mm-hmm. Um, but he talks about how West Africa, and Ghana in particular, was so instrumental to creating what we call modernity. Modernity, excuse me. Okay. Such a tough okay. word to say. A lot of things, I can probably curse less so the kids can watch it, but yeah. <laughs> it's a, there's a lot of messed up things that go on here in Ghana sure. and that you see evidence of mm-hmm. here in Ghana. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of the young people want out and they want to see more of the world because right. it's their labor mm-hmm. or their ancestors' labor that created the rest of the world, yeah. that made it great. Yeah. So that's a natural inclination. Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. Do, you, do you believe Africa is the future, though? Africa is the past, present, future. Really? Yeah. Wow. Being, being in the US and hearing about Africa, Ghana, what, do you, what misconception do you have, or did you have any, if you did, before even the first time you, you came yeah. to Ghana? No, not really. I would say I came here with an open mind, and I, I talked to many people, relatives, mm-hmm. friends who had been here. Mm-hmm. Um, many times. So we had a very good orientation. I personally had a very good orientation to mm-hmm. what to expect. I had been to Jamaica before as a young okay. small boy, so mm-hmm. I kind of compared it to that a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, there was a lot of um, similarities. Okay. Even in Jamaica, you can go speak tree, tree. Fonte right now in heard. the Maroons. I went there one time and I was up there speaking and they were like, whoa, wow. how do you know this language? Wow. I'm like, oh, they're speaking the similarities. It. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same. the same people. It's the same. They are the same. And you've traveled around the world. Mm-hmm. Your work and everything. Mm-hmm. What would you say you've learned about black people that taught you everything about yourself? What would you say? I would say here was where I learned a lot the most, I would say, about black people. But what I can say, what I can say is going to Ethiopia, mm-hmm. I would encourage everybody to go to Ethiopia. Oh, wow. Just because it's the cradle of civilization. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's where the first people came up out of the earth and populated the world. I saw in your uh, documentary, you would be going there as well. This, uh, the fishing uh, documentaries, mm-hmm. uh, you would be doing the same in Ethiopia. Is that correct? Uh, right? Eventually. Eventually. Yeah, from your mouth to God's ears, <laughs> yes. Wow, wow. So let's talk about accommodation. Uh, obviously, you knew people here, right? Mm-hmm. How was it uh, for you trying to find a place to stay whilst... Um, it was... It was easy at first, mm. <laughs> but then, you know, Ghanaians don't like to tell you no. Yeah. They don't want to be the person that said to disappoint, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So I had a friend who was Ghanaian. Mm-hmm. He lived in America for a while. I met him here, but then he moved to America with mm-hmm. his wife and had, mm-hmm. had a family there. Mm-hmm. He was building up here, building up here. And then he was like, I'm moving back. He moved back before we came. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. He's like, there's an apartment. If you want to stay, you can stay, come and stay at the apartment. Um, they had like a four, four kind of unit apartment. Mm-hmm. And so I stayed with my auntie first, my host mom, where I okay. first okay. came to Ghana. And so she was like, I was like, we'll stay here for a few weeks. <laughs> and then he's getting the apartment ready. A few weeks turned into a few months. <laughs> and I went to go check on things and mm-hmm. things were not ready the way they wow. were supposed to be, right? Wow. So we ended up finding a place in our neighborhood where I also, again, um, first got oriented mm. in Ghana, in Cape Coast, mm. small neighborhood called Ola, Ola, okay. Ola. Ola okay. Estates. 
and um, it stands for Our Lady of Apostles. It was a it was like a community founded by the Catholic Church. Okay. okay. But I call it Old Ladies of Apostles because <laughs> the old ladies run the whole show there in the town. <laughs> And uh, it's pretty. It's a pretty wow. nice neighborhood, so, but it's a it's a middle class neighborhood okay. for Ghana. Okay. So but, you've not really had any challenges trying to find accommodation because most people no, do have that. No, and I think it's it's it's, it's mainly attributed to the fact that I've been coming and going okay. for so long. Okay. Well, I wanted to you know track back a little bit. Mm -hmm. National Geographic. Yeah. What has been some challenges trying to get your story across or even to document this kind of stories? What have been right. some challenges you? Well. Uh, let me explain something to you. So the National Geographic leg is, it's not National Geographic. National Geographic has two arms. There's a philanthropic arm, mm -hmm. and then there's their production arm. Okay. okay. So my grant is funded by the philanthropic arm mm -hmm. to bounce into the production arm. Okay. Do you get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I understand. And so when you ask about challenges, mm -hmm. I think there are challenges any story teller would tell you that, that especially dealing with this digital medium will come up against in Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, one is meeting communities that want me to pay them for mm -hmm. their story. Wow. You know, wow. Um, and that's something that I can't do. Yeah. As a journalist, yeah. mm -hmm. it's unethical to pay someone for your story. It's, true. it's also bad practice because you don't know if they're telling you what they what you want to hear because you paid them mm -hmm. or you don't know if they're telling you the real truth, the real truth right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one challenge. Another challenge is uh, people being scared to talk about what I am talking about, wow. which involves a lot of illegality. Mm. It involves um, consequences from uh, you know, organized criminal enterprises, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. um, it can very well be a life or death situation wow. for some of the people who choose to talk to me. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, I've been very careful in choosing the subjects that I have chosen. And it also wow. narrows down a lot of the people that I can even <laughs> talk to because so many people are involved in the illegal trade of fish, mm -hmm. not because they're criminals or want to do bad, mm -hmm. it's because the situation has become so dire. Wow. And that the only way for a lot of them to operate is to go along with those elements mm -hmm. to just have something to eat wow. and to have something to sell. Wow, mm -hmm. that's very interesting. We would go for a commercial break and uh, we'll be back very soon. So yes, this episode is brought to you by Terra Nova, home for the elderly. And uh, this space is created by a lady from the diaspora or people from the diaspora who understand the needs of the diaspora and moving back from the US and other uh, places around uh, the globe to Ghana and currently living here. Most people came back uh, retirement for their retirement. And um, sometimes, you know, not having a family member here is sometimes challenging. Um, if you are sick or the elderly at your home is sick and you have to go to work, you can't just leave them alone. So you need to, you know, find places like Terra Nova Homes where you can, you know, um, you know, sign up. You know, they have nurses who are certified also in, in CPR training, very friendly, who can take care of, of um, the elderly with passion, not just anyone just wanting to just do it for the money, but people who are, you know, dedicated with their craft and everything. And they are located in Tema Community 20, very close to medical facilities. So you don't have anything to worry, you know, very beautiful place. And yeah, check them out. Their name would be on the screen. Their telephone numbers will also be on the screen and also in the description, as well as their GPS or their landmark. So it will be very easy to look at them. So the name is Terra Nova Home for the Elderly. Don't forget. And you have to check them out. Let's get back into the video. What would you say has been three, apart from this is not National Geographic, this is Ghana, you know, yes. electricity is not stable, yes. water counts out all the time. What have been some major challenges? Oh, okay. Those are the two, two of the three, if you want to go for three, yeah, I'll say those have been some major challenges. I'm here with my wife. Okay. And wow. so she, she quit her job for about a month, I mean, about a year. Wow. to come and support me on this venture, which is very noble of her, right? Wow. Yeah, very beautiful lady. Thank oh, you. Wow. So I'm so very sweet. thankful wow. for her support. And, and in this time, mm -hmm. she has had some challenges, and so have I, but wow. I would say she's experienced them head on. Did more she so tell you me. what her challenges are? Oh, yeah, no, we lived them together. So the first month we moved, so we finally moved into our place. Okay. Beautiful two-bedroom mm -hmm. accommodation, which is very nice. Wow. Um, I, I even have a little, what they call a boy's quarters in okay, the back. Okay, yeah. I call it's it the nice. man cave because okay. I'm not a boy, okay. you know, yeah. go back there and <laughs> do my brainstorming, do my writing. Mm -hmm. um, but 
the water was not uh, was not flowing for the first month of this wow. year. You probably experienced this in January, and um, it was very bad. Um, I think the worst is when the water and the lights go out. Yeah. Because then it's like, oh, if the lights go out, I can go cool myself in the shower. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. fine, right? Mm -hmm. But if it's both go out, then you're like fighting mosquitoes. You, they all come inside because it's dark, you know. They they find their way inside the mosquito net over the bed somehow. And wow, um, yeah, I would just go outside in my drawers and lay down on the street. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not even kidding. Just go lay down, cool off. Thankfully, we live near the coast, so yeah. we we'll get a breeze on the hill, okay. which is very yeah. nice. Wow. Um, but those are very, to so me, very minor anything. challenges. Okay, you've not had any crazy challenges that you'd be like, okay, now I'm done with Ghana, I'm packing my bags and leave it. I would say the most, I would say crazy challenges are interpersonal challenges, dealing with other people. Okay. okay. Um, being somebody who is, um, looks the way I do, I'm tall, I'm mm -hmm. loud, I'm mm -hmm. fair skinned or mm -hmm. light, lighter complected, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so that makes me stand out in many places, mm -hmm. in, especially in the more rural places where I travel. So the the people who want to be your friend and they yeah. they just want to be your friend because yeah. they you see you're, you're from outside, right. you're an American. Maybe you can help them. Maybe you can give them money, something. Or, like yeah, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and also dealing with friends who I've made over the time, coming back and forth. Okay. And now you know, I come here on vacation. Mm -hmm. And they want to act like we should just be vacationing the whole time. And I'm like, I'm not here to vacation right now. I'm here to work on this project and get things done. And I, I, I'm sorry, I can't go booze with you every single night, every single day. Um, but uh, that was that those interpersonal challenges are some of the, the more serious challenges that I've had to confront this time okay. around. Wow. Yeah. That's very interesting. But without all experience that you've had, would you still advise friends, family watching you from the US is to still, you know, come back or visit to you or you intend Of to course. It? Yeah, no. Everybody should come to Ghana. Okay. I feel like every body of means who can afford to do it without injuring themselves should come to Ghana wow. and experience life. One, the food is great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. the people, despite the fact that sometimes yeah, you'll find People who are opportunists and want to be your friends for not so good reasons. Beneficial. You find that anywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. So you just gotta put your guard up. Okay. Use your, you know, thinking cap mm -hmm. and keep it moving. Okay. So what what would be some advice you'd give to them if they are coming? I don't like to give advice. Really? Yeah. I just I mean, want to say I would okay. say I would say come with an open heart. Okay. Open mind. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Le check your check your privilege at the door. How about okay. that? So, I mean, you've not spoke about your family. I mean, you just yes. spoke a little bit about your, um, your wife and mm -hmm. your partner. Mm -hmm. But how did your family, your, your, if your mom or dad, um, yeah. your, your siblings reacted yeah. when you told them the lesson? Well, I've been coming here for a so long time. Okay. So they're, they're <laughs> like, oh, Chris is going back to Ghana again. <laughs> but this time they knew it was for an extended period of time. And, um, mm -hmm. and my dad passed away about two years ago. So oh, last time I was here, though, I was here for COVID right before COVID hit and I got stuck here. Oh wow. Yeah, that was interesting. But as I got 2020. 20, okay. So I got here like the beginning of March before mm -hmm. COVID became a thing in Ghana. It was already raging in the US. Yes. But it became a thing here mm -hmm. literally days after I got here. Wow. Did not know how I was gonna get back or when I was gonna get mm -hmm. back. And my dad was sick. Wow. And so he was calling congressmen and trying to find me a way to get back and finally got on an embassy charter flight out of here. Mm -hmm about three weeks after I was supposed to leave. Wow, wow. But um, I saw him, I got to see him for one month before he had a stroke and passed away. <clears throat> and so that was a very, oh, that's okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow, so um, let's talk about adapting because no matter how worse these situations are, it's amazing here in Ghana, you say. <coughs> what do you think you did different that made you adapt? Well, I think uh, adaptability is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that I would say I've done to adapt is just a, an a, adopt um, a global view and perspective. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I said, I'm a yoga instructor, sure. so yeah. I constantly meditate, I constantly ground, I constantly mm -hmm. find ways to connect with nature to make sure I'm still connected, if that makes mm -hmm. any sense. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, we're connected anyway, but that's, I call the world my home. So adapting is just 
It's okay. not a it's not a challenge okay. for me. Let's talk about being a yoga instructor, if you if it's okay. Sure. Okay, so it started when you had to leave um, CNN and then you had to find yourself or you know to have a moment to meditate and stuff like that. That's when it started. Correct. Yeah, it was a part of my healing from okay. um, being involved in some traumatic okay. incidences at work. So mm -hmm. now, do you do you you know accept or have a how do you call it? Is it um, offer the same service to people who are interested to, to kind of... Yeah, so I, I did have a few yoga classes here. Um, I really like to work with the kids okay. because adults are <laughs> just troublesome, you know. Um, the kids are much more open to it. And so I have a couple of friends who are mm -hmm. teachers. And so I did a few uh, classes with their mm -hmm. children and with their... Okay. They're students. Okay. Um, I've done I've done a few private sessions here, but for me, it's not so much about teaching people how to move. It's about showing people through example okay. how to live in unity with yourself. Okay. Because okay. a lot of times we like to separate and compartmentalize ourselves, mm -hmm. you know. But and while we are naturally separate, there's a higher and lower self. Right. It's when those two come together that we're at our masterful best. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So do you offer that service now if someone even wants to? No, no, I'm not open for service right now. I'm fully focused on this documentary right wow. now. Wow. Mm -hmm. What excites you about the documentary since you brought that What up? excites me about the documentary is one, to just be able to raise awareness about the issues mm -hmm. surrounding the fisheries and the ocean. I'm very, uh, I love water. Um, it's something that I've always grown up around. Uh, and the majority of this earth is covered in water. Right. Yet we know so little about it. Only about 1% of the ocean is mapped. Mm -hmm. um, and also, only about 1% of the ocean is protected okay. from destructive practices, mm -hmm. pollution, mm -hmm. marine protected areas. Those are the areas in the ocean where okay. you can't wow. ship, you can't drill for oil, you can't fish, you can't mine. Wow. You can't do any of those things. But it's only 1%. Wow. And the UN just recently tried to come together and designate more ocean, more of the ocean as so a protected, protected, but they couldn't agree. Wow. About 70 nations out of 168 could not agree on protecting the ocean. Wow. Even for though we all need, good. for our own good, even though we all need these oceans to survive, not just to create the clean air that we need to breathe, but to also create uh, protein and food wow. Wow. that we need to eat. So if people are watching, how can they do to help? contribute to protecting um, the environment and the ocean? Uh, there's many things you can do. Okay. One is like, don't throw rubbish on the floor, okay. on the ground. Okay. You know, there's, back when I first came, there was a campaign called Keep Ghana Clean. clean. Yep. I don't know what happened to that campaign. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what happened to it, but we need to get back on track with mm -hmm. keeping Ghana clean. Mm -hmm. That's the first point of pride you have about a place. But the problem is, is that to me, people come here and they complain about the trash mm -hmm. on the ground. But what I see it as is a reflection of how people feel about themselves. Wow. Constantly trash your body, you will constantly trash mm -hmm. the outside world mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one thing that I would say you can wow. do. Wow, that's very interesting. I, I love how the conversation is going so far. If you're watching and you're enjoying it, please, I want you to like the video. First, subscribe and share to friends and family to also enjoy. And I was nominated for the best content creator of the year it will be on the screen please go and vote for me okay. so where we are currently recording this video is bureau bureau is a co-working space located in osu where you can it's not like an office you know but then you are sharing with other people there's private room that you can have for your meetings and other things and that maybe you move back from the us and that you want a place where you can sit comfortably have high speed wi-fi uh constant electricity without having to worry about the lights going off I think you should check it out and they are very affordable, very close to everywhere. It's in the center of Osu, very close to Jamestown Coffee. So I want you to check it out. Okay, so let's continue the episode. Will you say you are comfortable living here in Ghana? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, for sure. Really? <laughs> wow. With all the lights going off and everything. It's a it's minor possible. inconvenience, yeah. Wow. Compared to what you are... Interesting. What, the, the benefits, I say it's a minor inconvenience. Wow. I know you're here to do the convention and everything, mm -hmm. but what do you, have you seen some business ideas that you think if people watching from the diaspora should come and do oh, they man. would make money? Plenty of business ideas. Tell us three. No. <laughs> One? <laughs> nope. They're my business ideas. Sorry. You got to come and consult with me if you want to okay. talk about these business okay. ideas. So you can do that, right? Of course. Okay, so um, 
He is going to give you a lot, okay? Leave your emails, <laughs> your phone numbers, give everything to them right now. They, yeah, but no, what I would say though, what I would say, you say three business ideas right. for a diaspora and coming here to, yeah, do, to, do, to do business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would say one, don't come here to do business. Okay. You should be a business before you come yeah. here. Wow. All right. Because you come here with no business set up, no ability to start a business, no connections to the institutions that formalize your business here. Either get with somebody who has done these things, okay. talk to them, listen to them. Mm -hmm. Do what they say. Don't just listen to them and don't do what they say. Okay. Because there's plenty of people here who, not only who do that, but there are plenty of people here who have done the thing successfully. Okay. okay. So just listen to the people who... Okay. You mean partnership? Yeah. Okay. Or not even partnership. Sometimes you just become a part of a community like, okay. like you probably are mean. with a bunch of other content mm -hmm. creators mm -hmm. and you share best practices. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the person at the mm -hmm. business licensing place that you yeah. need to go talk yeah. to. or. Oh, you want to get into agriculture? Okay, mm -hmm. these are the people at okay. the Department of Agriculture you need to talk to. Yeah. Wow. A lot of Ghanaians complain to me that some dance friends often come across, I know more than you do, so mm -hmm. you listen to me now. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about how we can, you know, try to work with each other without having to step on each other's foot, if that makes right, sense? Right. What do you think we can do to kind of make it easy to work with each other because sometimes we just have a diaspora community and they work among themselves mm -hmm. not even though they are in ghana they don't really work mm -hmm. hand in hand with the ghanians what do you think we can do to yeah i've noticed that um so i've always come to a place any place not just mm -hmm. ghana with the intention to not just hang out with a bunch of americans okay i can do that in america <laughs> right I, I didn't come here to meet and greet every <laughs> Af every american i'm right. not a ambassador mm -hmm. that's not my job mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I came here to interact with people mm -hmm. from the land mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that know the land, wow. right? Or the sea in this case. Wow. And so um, I would encourage people, one, diasporans, no matter if they're African American, mm -hmm. from the UK, Brazil, wherever, mm -hmm. people returning to Ghana or returning to Africa should come with an open mind, understanding okay. that there is a wealth of institutional knowledge that you don't have about this particular place. Just wow. like you would if you start a new job. Mm. You wouldn't go into a new job and expect to know where the copier is, exactly. expect to know where the coffee maker is, mm -hmm. expect to know where all the things that you need to make yourself comfortable are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can't come here and expect the same okay. when wow. you come to a new place. And for the Ghanaians here mm -hmm. to also get outside of their minds mm -hmm. about what they perceive to be um, the attitude of Diaspora. diasporans, yeah. So a lot of times people are just smiling in your face mm -hmm. just to get what they want out of you right? and then yeah. forget you, the rest. Did right? you experience the Obroni thing? Oh, of course. Are you kidding me? <laughs> really? When I was first came here, that was when I first experienced wow. it. And so I also learned the lane for How do you feel when you hear that and what goes to your mind? I just, I just think about it as they, they've been educated or indoctrinated mm -hmm. into saying that and seeing that and you have to also think about the trauma behind mm -hmm. why people are calling out Obruni in right. the first place right. it's because there was a time here when colonial powers existed mm -hmm. that if you did not recognize this person from outside or not recognize this white man that could be mm -hmm. some trouble for you possibly right. you get you understand yeah. what i mean yeah. So what I try to do is diffuse the situation mm -hmm. by speaking either Tree or Fonty mm -hmm. or tell them, oh, I'm Bibini, mm -hmm. I am not, <laughs> yeah. I'm not Obruni, mm -hmm. you know, and they'll be like, what? But you look like this. And I'm like, well, look at the, check the coil pattern yeah. in my hair and, you know, and how I dance, you know what I mean? So those things, yeah, right. Those things kind of, um, those things kind of disarm people and make them feel a little bit more relaxed. Wow. And I oftentimes hear from Ghanaians, they're like, oh, you don't. You don't act like all the other mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people that we meet mm -hmm. from outside. And, and it's because I'm here to relate to okay. a heart, I like not, that. not just, mm -hmm. you know. I understand. So, I mean, um, I want to ask this, okay. America, Ghana, based on your experience, there's every country has its ups and downs, right? Mm -hmm. Which one do you think is better and suits you more? I wouldn't say one is better than the other or suits me more than the other. There's things here that I enjoy mm -hmm. that I know I'll miss when I go home. Mm -hmm. um, and there's things at home in mm -hmm. America that I enjoy that I know I do miss when mm -hmm. I'm here. Mm -hmm. So it's only, I would say, it's, it's not a, for me, it's not a matter of um, 
what's better or worse, mm -hmm. or what's up or down, mm -hmm. um, because all those are paradigms that are mm -hmm. false. In the I first ask place. that because there's, there's been a lot of um, Dash friends, Black Americans, moving mm -hmm. back, and they often say America is doomed, America is going down. Yeah. And I don't think you think the same, or what, what's your opinion? Because there's a lot of people. No, America back. is a great place, and okay. I can tell you, coming to Ghana mm -hmm. and seeing how people were proud of Ghana, especially back in 2004, mm -hmm. they may not be so proud right now. Right. But back in 2004, mm -hmm. you were fresh into a democracy. Those, those times, and that time I was here about six months, mm -hmm. made me more proud of being an American, mm -hmm. mainly because I was jealous of the pride that people had for Ghana. Yeah. And I was like, I want a place to be proud of. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, there's some messed up things that mm -hmm. America has done to my people, to the world. Mm -hmm. And at the time, it was 2004, so they were like mm -hmm. actively engaged in the Iraq war. <laughs> and it was, people were really mad at America globally. And I took it upon myself to pick out the points of pride mm -hmm. in America mm -hmm. and think about, you know what? These are where my people are from. Yes, I'm Dogon. I'm also Native American. Right. Those are my roots. Right. My, my people came out of that soil. My people built that nation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and made it great. All the best parts about America wow. are the black parts of America. Mm -hmm. Your music, wow. your food, mm -hmm. your dance, mm -hmm. the way we dress. Mm -hmm. Nobody's the most emulated man in the world is the black, black man. That is true. You know it. That is true. And what bigger stage does the black man had in the world than in America? Wow. Wow. People say we don't know who we are. We don't know ourselves. What do you think as black people? I mean, I know who I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I most can, people out there. I could say that that's mm -hmm. I can't speak for other people. Mm -hmm. I can only speak for myself. Okay. And there was I a time. That. I respect yeah, that. there was a time where I, I probably could say the same thing. Okay. But I feel like with time and with study and with mm -hmm. um, introspection, okay. you get to know who you are. I like that. Mm -hmm. Now, let, let's talk about current affairs. Apart from the documentaries, are you offering any kind of services that people watching from the diaspora can benefit in any way, shape or form in that consultation? Or anything no. Like that? No? Watch my documentary, Follow okay. Saviors of Our Seas. Mm -hmm. Let your life be changed by watching this documentary. That's okay. the service I can provide. Wow. We are almost at the end of the interview now, and uh, if you did enjoy He Is Crazy, I will leave every link in the description and also yes. on the screen. Please go check him out and see what he is doing here on the continent, okay? So I want you to advise the Africans, give them knowledge about you know, how they can you know, add value to some things that they have here to either, yeah. either export or to make you know, money yeah. so that they don't always result in leaving to the UK, US to find a right. well, that, that well, it starts good. inside okay. and realizing that the gold is not in the hills, <clears throat> mm -hmm. the gold is not in the river, mm -hmm. it's inside you. Mm -hmm. You are money. Mm -hmm. You are gold. Mm -hmm. You are the value. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. I see. That's it. Wow. So moving back, do you think everything has been worth it for you? Yeah, are you kidding? Yeah, I'm, I'll be back very soon. So, yes, it's always worth it. Well, if you have a final message to the people, what would that be? Uh, just stay true to yourself. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much. For Thank you. Coming. Thank you for talking to me. No doubt. It's been a wonderful episode. And please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, stay tuned for more amazing content coming your way. And yeah, wanna have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you, man. All right. Thank you. All right. That was good.